I've travelled and hiked around Indonesia for five months in total now and even though it is an incredible place to visit, there's a few things that I think you should know before you head out there. Let's go. Hello long distance hikers and long term world travellers, Russ here bringing you the best tips and inspiration for hiking around the world. Before we start make sure that you stick around to the end of this video for my top tip for when you're trekking around Indonesia. Ok so the first reason why trekking around Indonesia sucks is the amount of stray dogs that are out there. When you get out there you'll talk to a few of the locals and you ask about the dogs and they say oh no they all have owners but you look at the state of them they're all covered in mange, they're all gaunt, they're all uh, really low on weight. Uh, so it's very likely that a lot of these dogs are going to have rabies. How does this uh, relate to hiking? Well, if you're going out hiking and you're on your own and you come across a pack of dogs that are walking around and they're all rabid, uh, the worst thing that you can do is run because then they'll just chase after you. Uh, a lot of runners actually out there, uh, while they're running they'll walk past some dogs and then they'll start chasing them because it kind of triggers their predatory instinct in them. So yeah, these stray dogs, you don't know if they're rabid, so just be very mindful of that and get your rabies injections before you go out there. Okay, the second reason why trekking in Indonesia really sucks is because of the amount of tourists there. It's so, so busy with tourists that when you're going trekking up these volcanoes, especially in the high season or in the school holidays, expect it to be absolutely rammed with people, especially in islands like Bali or in Lombok or in Java. Everything kind of radiates out from Bali because all of the tourists from Australia and also other places around the world they use Bali as their hub and then they kind of fan out. So the further you go away from Bali the less touristic it gets but there's no guarantee. I, I haven't been around to every single island in the Indonesian archipelago so I wouldn't know but that's just my experience when I've been traveling around there for five months. So yeah this isn't so much a bad thing I just want to manage your expectations. Don't expect to go to Indonesia and trek up a volcano and not come across anyone. If you're looking for solitude Indonesia is definitely not the place for you. But as I said before, it all depends on which island you are and how far away from Bali you are. Okay, the third reason why trekking in Indonesia really sucks is because of the amount of rubbish everywhere. It's just insane. The amount of rubbish that is just poured out onto the streets, that's poured out onto the ground around all the checkpoints on any of the trails up the volcanoes you walk on. There's feces everywhere where people just go for a crap right by the trail. There's toilet roll everywhere. You go up to Mount Rinjani and you just just can't avoid it. I, it's incredible the amount of rubbish that's literally dumped everywhere around that country. What I usually do when I'm trekking around Indonesia is try to pick up as much trash as I possibly can while I'm on my way out there. Bring an extra bag for rubbish and just pick up as much as you can. Obviously while keeping trying to keep clean and everything like that, don't go picking up something that's too nasty, but just try and do your bit. When I trekked up Mount Rinjani last year just after the earthquakes, on the way back down through the forest, uh, we just made sure we picked as much rubbish up as we could find. Usually it's just like these little packets of sweets, sometimes it's like a ramen noodle packet or something like that uh, but there's just so much of it even in the more indigenous areas so uh, yeah try and do your bit as best you can. The fourth reason why trekking in Indonesia really sucks is the unofficial organizations that run the trekking areas and the trekking hotspots. So for instance if you're planning on hiking up Mount Batur in Bali which is probably the most popular volcano on that island just expect to find these unofficial organizations actually running the area. What they do is they tout around and they look for tourists and they offer you like a package for somewhere to stay and things like that. Just had like a bit of a freak out moment. So I went up the hill to go and um, get some food, get some dinner and I was just about to pay and then this tourist came up to me and said, oh, um, are you climbing the mountain tomorrow? And I said, yeah, he goes, oh, be paid already. And I was just like, well, yeah, you know, I, I understand that the way that it works here is that you should be able to actually go up the mountain for free, but there's a kind of local organization that kind of funnels you into paying some money to go up there with a guide. And I understand that one, these people don't, um, have much money. Two, this is their home. Three, um, I do know that the volcanoes are like a holy place and all this kind of thing so I'm not too sure if I should hike it on my own but this guy was like don't even do it. If you pay the money you're, you're supporting this like illegal organisation. I'm like oh I literally just started freaking out like I didn't feel too safe and I had to like message Wyan and say Wyan what should I do? And I met this uh, guy who worked in the restaurant up the hill and he said literally you have no need to worry this guy had like a bit of a bad day and I think he was kind of expecting too much but it's 
it's very different here like you'd think that just climbing a volcano would be a simple thing but it's not like to be fair all it is is 20 quid that's all it costs me for a room a guy to take me up there he's going to cook us breakfast on the top of the hill to be honest if that's the way that it's done then that's the way that it's done so what if you can't get it for free but yeah just this tourist guy kind of freaked me out but the thing with these unofficial organizations is that they don't like it when people hike up these volcanoes without a guide. They claim that it's for religious reasons, so they give you that kind of guilt trip like, oh, okay, I'll go up the volcano with a guide because it's for religious reasons. I don't know if that's true, but for instance, if you're planning on trekking up Mount Batur, you're gonna come across this type of organization and they will funnel you into going up there with a guide. When I was hiking up Mount Batur with this guide, I was with a few other people from Germany as well. Uh, I actually found that this trek was so easy. There was a very clear, wide, very well maintained track going all the way up to the summit. And there was even benches and like some stalls up there selling fruit and beer and things like that. Like you don't need a guide to climb up this volcano. You really don't. Um, what I would recommend you do though is actually when you get to these places expect to be touted and just go with it. I would actually rather pay the 20 quid it was for the accommodation, for the guide, for some breakfast included. They make a bit of money, you go up the volcano in one piece. I actually heard of people that have tried hiking up Mount Batur on their own and they get mugged or they get kind of pestered by these people. Uh, I've heard of people getting, hold, getting held at knife point. Honestly, I, I wouldn't worry, just so long as you go with the flow, pay the money, go up there with a guide, expect to see this kind of thing a lot, even around Mount Rinjani and the other volcanoes. Uh, they, they just don't like when people try and go up there for free on their own. It's just a funny cultural thing. I've even heard a bunch of tourists calling these kind of uh, unofficial organizations the mafia. They're not the mafia, they're not out there to kill you, but um, they, just, they do just wanna try and make a little bit of money out of you. So like I said, go with the flow and you'll be fine. Okay, the fifth and final reason why trekking in Indonesia sucks, and this one we can't really do anything about, and that's the amount of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. So if you're planning on going to Bali or any other of the Indonesian islands for a, like a two or three week holiday, and one of your main objectives is to hike a particular volcano, then just keep an eye on that volcano uh, in the news and see if it's actually erupting around the time that you're going to be going. Obviously, we can't really predict these kinds of things. They're all very sudden. Uh, the same goes with earthquakes but yeah I actually had a friend that I used to work with back at Dyson and he went to Bali I think on his honeymoon and uh, I think about a week before their flight was due to leave to go to Bali the volcano in Bali the big one Mount Agung actually started erupting it didn't ruin their honeymoon but they uh, they did have to kind of rejig a few plans here and there and a few parts of the island were actually closed off so you couldn't go to those places so it's definitely worth checking in the news about earthquakes and volcanic eruptions because they're very common it's called the ring of fire for a very good reason uh, but if you do some research and you keep your options open uh, it won't be too much of an issue last year there were a massive amount of earthquakes in uh, indonesia around the island of lombok and the gili islands and yes these all happened suddenly but like i said the same goes with volcanoes just keep an eye on the news and uh, keep your options open and you should be fine okay guys you've made it this far so as promised here is my top tip for trekking in indonesia and that is to download the bmkg app the bmkg app is the best app to use in Indonesia uh, for volcanic eruptions and for earthquakes so it's going to give you all of the information and all of the kind of Richter scale readings of anything any kind of uh, geological activity that's going on in Indonesia and it will actually give you push notifications saying that an earthquake or a volcanic eruption is happening there over there or here or if one's expected if there's an evacuation that needs to happen this is all purely for your safety and just as a precaution don't let this deter you from going to Indonesia it's just an incredible place to visit uh, but yeah do download the BMKG app you won't regret it and it will come in very handy for your trip as I just said Indonesia is a beautiful beautiful place to visit and even though I've mentioned all of these things that I think you should know before you go uh, do not let that deter you from actually going and do enjoy your experience and see all of the wonderful things that Indonesia has to offer thanks everyone for watching this video if you liked it then hit that thumbs up be sure to watch either of the videos to my side here also if you haven't done so already do consider subscribing to my channel for more videos just like this one and I'll see you guys in the next one